Hello and welcome, it's Jessica Drummond here from the Integrative Women's Health Institute. And I'm here to answer a specific question today about exercise and nutrition and the menstrual cycle. So this is for the female athletes in our community and it doesn't matter if you're a teenage female athlete or a perimenopausal teenage athlete or a uh, teenage, or an, or not a perimenopausal teenage athlete, but a perimenopausal female athlete, or a woman trying to work out hard in during or after pregnancy. So we've got to consider, not during pregnancy, but after pregnancy, all through our childbearing years, from puberty to menopause, except those times when we are pregnant or nursing, we have to consider the menstrual cycle as a partner in our athletic training. And this, this is effective whether you're pushing for a personal record, whether you're trying to make a high school or co a collegiate athletic team, or you're a woman in perimenopause trying to maintain your exercise gains or push uh, your training records as well. So training and competition records as well. So let's talk about how to fit in the right kind of training depending on where you are in your menstrual cycle. So let's just start at the beginning. Day one of the menstrual cycle is the first day of bleeding. This is the first day of your period. And I noted with this little red squiggly line here, those are the first few days of your menstrual cycle where women will generally have their periods. Now, if you don't have your period and you're very athletic, or your periods are irregular, so if you either have amenorrhea, no periods, or you've lost your periods, or your periods are irregular, or your periods are painful, that's a red flag. So you want to have that assessed because it means that you are overtraining, you're undernourishing, or you have other some other hormonal issue. So problems with period irregularity, uh, or losing your cycle, especially in athletes, is a big red flag. There's my elementary coloring, beautiful red flag, if your periods are not regular and strong. You want them to last about four to five days at least. So then I have three lines here on this graph. The, the black is estrogen, the purple is testosterone, and the, the pink or red here is progesterone. So these are the three dominant female reproductive hormones that make a difference to your athletic training, believe it or not. So what happens is these first few days of the menstrual cycle when you have your period up till about day three, all of these hormones are at pretty low levels. So they're not supporting you very well. So this is a recovery time. We'll get back to that in a minute. But then, starting roughly around day four or five, all the way to day 14, 15, when you ovulate, so this orange line is ovulation, you're in what some clinicians and researchers have called the Venus week. This is awesome because this is when you can push your performance, you can work out harder, um, you can you know, eat more carbs, we'll get into that in a minute, so this is the week where you naturally, because of hormonal support, you feel stronger, more powerful, more brain focused, more creative, more agile, more productive. So tune into this week as you're thinking about your athletic training and competition, because certainly it doesn't mean that women can't compete and win and do great things during you know, a recovery time, either the, the period or at the end of the menstrual cycle, which we'll get back to, but this time, the push perform, Venus week, days roughly four to 14 of your menstrual cycle are when you have a natural boost from your reproductive hormones. So you wanna take advantage of that. And I've detailed a little bit of that here. You, this is a time when we can push performance gains, you can increase intensity, you can increase the weight, you can increase how long your distance training is. Um, your estrogen, because estrogen is much higher, it's at, it's at its absolute highest right before ovulation, estrogen supports fat burning. So we wanna fuel our uh, training at this time with more fat. You also can tolerate 
generally speaking, more carbs because you need to burn off that, uh, that energy, which can come from carbohydrates. Most of them, most car of the carbohydrates you're consuming during this time should come from vegetables, which is our best source of carbohydrates. But assuming you don't have any yeast issues, fruit, uh, whole grains, this is the time when you can add more of that in beans. So fruit, whole grains, and beans will really be supportive of these pushed performance uh, and training times when you're lifting more weight, running further, you know, more distance, more endurance, and higher intensity if you're doing a, a sport that's you know, intensity intervals or your training intensity intervals. So this is the time, the Venus week is when we want to exercise harder and it's easier for fat burning. So if you are trying to exercise as a part of a weight loss program, this is when you're really supported. Now, of course, your estrogen levels have to be good and normal. And if they're not, you know, we can talk about that on another day if your estrogen levels are low, which is another reason why we want to watch out for the red flag of, of not strong, robust four to five day periods that are regular, because if not, it's a sign that your estrogen may not be high enough to really be supporting this Venus week. Same problem if you're on the birth control pill, because the birth control pill actually uses a protein called sex hormone binding globulin to tie up much of your sex hormones and gives you back just a little enough, you know, for survival, but not enough for reproduction, also not enough for this performance boost. So be mindful if you're on the birth control pill that you know the benefits of the birth control pill and you know the risks and the downsides of the birth control and then you make a very informed uh, decision about being on the birth control pill or not because being, not being on it could potentially help your athletic performance and many other things like your sex drive, for example. So uh, then let's talk about testosterone. So the other thing that happens during this Venus week, not only is estrogen at its highest level, but so is testosterone, which again is a hormone that can help support, even in women, strength gains. It's not going to necessarily, you know, bulk you up. All of a sudden you're not going to be like getting testosterone or, you know, steroid shots. You're not going to be looking like, you know, overbuilt in the gym. That's, don't worry about that. Uh, you, but you'll have good levels of testosterone for women to gain strength. And women of all ages, uh, girls in puberty, teenage girls, uh, girls in high school, girls in college, women in their 20s, women throughout the childbearing years, and women in perimenopause, for sure, need adequate testosterone for many physiological functions. But one of the ones most important to this conversation is testosterone is essential for strength building. Ugh, look at that, right? Okay, <laughs> how's my muscle, right? All right, so let's move on to the luteal phase. So that's all the first half of the cycle, the menstrual cycle. That happens before ovulation. After ovulation, things shift. And you go from a time where you're gonna be pushing and harder intervals and heavier weights and longer distances to maintenance, okay? And maintenance is really important because in maintenance, we solidify the gains and we gain confidence. And we can utilize the luteal phase for two really important performance boosters. A connection to our intuition, which can help you read your opponents. It can help you uh, tune into, you know, where are, where are the gaps in your training? Is this really the sport that you actually want to do or kind of have you been pushed into it, right? This is a time to tune into your own intuition about what athletic endeavors you want to be doing at this time and then take advantage of some of the benefits of intuition for things like reading your opponents if you're playing a team sport or you're running a race. Um, you've got a better intuitive read on your opponents, which can also help with your records and winning games and things like that, your performance. Um, so intuition and plateau and gain confidence. So let's say you pushed your training. Now you want to stick with that level of uh, performance and training through roughly days 15 through 25. So about a week and a half where you're solidifying and gaining confidence in your athletic gains. Then you also want to shift from 
higher carbs and fat to more protein. More protein, again, is gonna feed that new muscle that you've been, you've been building over here, and it's going to allow you to solidify those gains, have some recovery in, in some of your systems, and sleep. Now, sleep is important everywhere. I mean, I can't really overemphasize sleep. Sleep is as essential for training as working out, but sleep during this phase helps you, again, solidify, gain confidence in uh, those improved gains that you got earlier in the cycle. Then we move on to roughly day 25, 26, where it's very natural and normal to feel a little more, a little less energy, a little bit more fatigued. Now, another sign of red flag here is if you have intense fatigue, if you have serious menstrual pain, if you know you have headaches or, or pelvic pain that take you out of the game, take you out of practice, take you out of school or work, if you're stuck in bed, exhausted and in pain, that is not normal. You may need to be screened for endometriosis. You may need to be seen by a pelvic health expert. Um, you know, we have to take a look at your hormone levels because we don't want you totally crashed out for days, you know, intense PMS, all of that is not normal. So that's a red flag, but it is normal. As you can see, all of these hormones are coming to their lowest levels again, where they'll stay for a few days early in the next cycle as we circle around, this continues on, right, month after month. These lower levels of hormones, you know, again, it's a time for now we want to shift into recovery mode. So this is when sleep is king, hydration, and eating a nice, balanced, nutrient-dense, tons of vitamins and minerals, at least eight to 10 servings of vegetables a day, plenty of food, plenty of calories, about 30% fat per day, and that's also through the cycle with maybe even a little more in the, uh, in the uh, uh, follicular phase. And this is when women really need to be fueling up and, and resting and recovering. It doesn't mean you don't work out at all, but maybe we add in more restorative practice. Maybe two or three times a week you're hitting a yoga class, you're doing a mindfulness practice, you're training you know, outside in nature at a slower pace. Again, hydration, sleep, and just valuing that we have this cycle to remind us that there are times when we need, when we need more recovery. Now, there's two things that I see all the time in my practice and that are you know, flashing lights in the literature, in the scientific literature, that women who are even elite or collegiate level athletes are not getting enough nutrients. So we need to eat far more vegetables, healthy fats, and clean proteins. Don't worry about calories so much. We've got to get the nutrition in. And if you're not getting enough, you're going to have red flag issues with your period. The second thing that's a huge common problem that I want you to start tuning into, and then we'll talk about these things more in coming videos, is shifting into more times during your day, during your week, all through all of these phases where you're in deep calm. We need more restorative and recovery time, even during the Venus week, even during uh, the follicular phase, where there's just deep relaxation, where you're slowing your breathing to about 10, uh, sorry, six breaths per, min per minute, one every 10 seconds. Right, slow it way down. Yoga classes, nature bathing, simply means just walk outside, be outside in nature without your phone, right? Shutting off electronic devices at least four hours a week, you know, all together and ideally a half day or a full day per week. We need to have times when our nervous system shifts into deep calm because we need that for recovery, for our muscles, for our cardiovascular systems, for our nervous systems. And women, you know, in perimenopause are not getting this enough of women who, even if they're not athletes, and women who are athletic through perimenopause, or if you're a teenager, if you're a collegiate athlete, if you're an athlete in the childbearing years, you're probably doing a lot of things other than your sport. And so it's like you're just fitting it in, you're really busy, push, 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 
and that causes over time a lot of stress on the nervous and cardiovascular system. So we need to balance that with shifts into deep relaxation. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. Get out there and work out, but don't forget recovery and start tracking your menstrual cycle so that you know when to exercise and when, when to exercise harder, when to solidify your gains, and when to focus on recovery. And I use uh, different tracking apps. We can talk about those in the future. One of my favorites is just Hormone Horoscope, which is kind of a cute one. It doesn't have as much bells and whistles, but it's sort of a cute daily reminder of where you are in your cycle. And keep doing this all the way through perimenopause and start as early as possible in puberty so you get to understand your cycle and how you feel during the various phases. All right, thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.